So to begin our DIY process, I'm using a ping pong ball cut in half for the eye, a glue gun to help with some of the stitches, an old journal that you may or may not want to cover, a paintbrush for your Mod Podge, and obviously Mod Podge to start covering. So I'm actually going to be layering some paper towels down. Everyone has paper towels in their house, but I wanted to use something that was kind of textured and that people would have in their house. So as you can see, I'm putting down a thin layer of Mod Podge right on the journal, and then I'm putting the paper towel on top of that, and then I'm adding more Mod Podge on top of the paper towel. So you should do Mod Podge, paper towel, Mod Podge again. So you want to keep adding layers until you get your desired consistency or texture on the actual journal. And I actually only did one layer of the paper towels and Mod Podge. You're going to end up painting over it anyway. Um, here what I'm doing is I actually rolled up a paper towel and I did a little coil almost like a snake. We're starting to do some of the stitches in the journal um, for the book. And I am just rolling that up. I put some Mod Podge down first and then I put Mod Podge over that again. As you can see there, I just applied some hot glue to our half ping pong ball to use for the eye, and I'm also adding some eyelids for our eye using the paper towels and Mod Podge once again, while also adding a ring around the eye. This is sort of part of the latch that opens the book, and while I'm not actually putting in a latch, it is very cool to have as a design on the front cover. Going back in with our paper towels again, I'm actually doing the snakes that are in the corner of the spell book. And if I were to do this again, I think I might use air dry clay or something like Model Magic. It might be a little bit easier than paper towels, but this works for something that's handy in your kitchen. And as you can see here, I'm actually going in with straight hot glue from the hot glue gun to add in a few more stitches, give it a little bit more texture, and then I let it dry. After giving it a good amount of time to dry, which is probably maybe a half hour or so, I let it air dry outside in the sun for quite some time, uh, maybe about 45 minutes, and it was all dry. And now I started on the back doing the same process, thin layer of Mod Podge down, and then you want to layer paper towels over that, and then Mod Podge again. And it is totally up to you if you want to continue this process into the inside cover. I elected not to, but if you want to, you can add another spooky piece of scrapbook paper just using the Mod Podge again, and just cut out a square that is just as big as your journal or the inside of your journal, and then you will cover up any extra pieces of paper towels or whatever scraps you have. And here's it all dry. Ooh. Similar to the process that we did in the front of the cover, we are going to take the hot glue again and just give it some extra stitches. Now that our journal is dry and all Mod Podgy, we are going to go in with some acrylic paint. So I am starting off with some brown acrylic paint and I would highly suggest you use acrylic paint as that will come out more opaque. And as you can still see, the paper towels didn't cover everything from my journal. So there's still a hint of blue, which actually is kind of interesting. It gives it more of a coolish tint. Um, but I'm going in with some warm brown colors just as a base and then I will be covering all of that area and then I will also be going in with some some black to give some depth to the stitches and certain areas of the journal. Same as our previous steps, we cannot forget our back side of our journal, the back side of water, or the back side of our journal. We are also covering this, don't forget the spine, with brown paint, and then we are also going in again with that black to highlight some of the stitches, give it some depth, really age it too, because this spell book is pretty old. Winifred Sanderson is old. <laughs> Now that the light is better in this shot, I'm continuing with a stippling motion of my paintbrush to cover all of the white areas, adding more depth to it. The more layers you add, the more diversity and depth you'll create. And now I am going in with a lighter pale green color. Um, I am filling this in for the eye, and then I'm going to add small strokes of black. You can also use a dark green or any darker color to add around the iris or the pupil of the eye, and this will just create a more um, real life looking eye. Realistic is the word I'm looking for, and yes, we will do that, and then fill in the pupil with some black. Yeah. 
Now that we've finished filling in the pupil, I'm going in with some black or darker colors, almost watered down too, to fill in some of the areas underneath the eyelid to really give it more depth. I'm actually watering it down so that the black isn't as heavy or as opaque as what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to go in with some white and add some highlights into the eye. I love doing this. It really gives more um, oomph to your eyes <laughs> and, you know, make it look real. Additionally, we're gonna go around the eye to create a little bit more depth. We're adding some wrinkles and making this eye look real. And after this, we gotta go in with a little bit of yellow. I wish I had some gold, so if you have gold, that would actually be a little better. We're highlighting some of the stitches. Um, if you also have some puff paint, that would be really beneficial as to really help emphasize the 3D textural aspect of the journal. Uh, I'm just going over some of the areas that we did with some of these stitches, and you'll just see. We'll keep going with the stitches. Now we're actually going in and making some stitch marks. I like to do varying stitch marks, so one way, another way, crossing stitch marks. You'll see whatever works best for you and you know your taste. This is where the puff paint would really come in handy, so if you have a gold puff paint, this is where the stitches will really stand out. But as you can see, I'm sort of alternating between one motion, doing an X, doing different types of stitches. Um, I learned this best from doing my Sally makeup. And in general, I just find that alternating stitches really looks more natural and it just gives the book a better look. Oh, hey, I rhymed. <laughs> Since we're all about that highlighting life, you know, highlight on fleek for this journal, Book. And we're going to go in with some silver uh, around the eye and then we're also going to be going in with silver in the corners with the snakes. This is just the way that the book looks in the movie. So if you are following along with a reference photo, that's what it'll look like. You can even go through and add even more depth to this area, going with some darker blacks, um, darker grays, you name it. Just build up that area like we have been for the last, you know, however many minutes seven minutes <laughs> and just continue to work on the painting. I know that if you want to leave it silver that's okay too. I actually went in after and I did a little bit of smaller details like on the ring around the eye for the little buckle and I added some black dots there and once again I'm going in around the eye just to give a little bit more depth. So as you can see, we finished our book. You can line it with whatever you want. You can add additional um, pages, like maybe a spooky page in here. Um, I would just use scrapbook paper. Here's the back. And I just sprayed it with this clear acrylic sealer from Mod Podge. It's matte. You can use any acrylic sealer that you have, but I just find that this gives it a nice finish and that you don't have to worry about you know, any paint chipping off, especially with the eye. But yeah, here's the final look at our book. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of the book, the spell book from Hocus Pocus. And I hope you guys are excited for a few other DIY Disney Halloween type video. So if you are interested in any of those, please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a video. Happy Halloween guys, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.